Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a koala. Um, we're going to be showing you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat today for our live show. So if you have questions while I'm painting, you can ask those and I'll try to answer them. Let's get started. Alrighty, I'm using a 9 by 12 inch canvas panel today. This is a Belgian linen panel from Frederick's their Pro Series. Uh, it's got a nice hard core, so I really like them. Kind of a low um, tack, low textured um, for the linen there. So I really like working on these. So thank you to Frederick's for that. It's like and me, low tack. Low tack. I know, I don't know why I said that. But that's me. No texture. Okay. Low, te low tech is used. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe high tech. I high tech. Know. Okay. I've got a number eight bright, a, a quarter inch and three eighths inch angle brush uh, in the Velvet Touch line. This is the six to one hundred series from Princeton. And then these are also the Velvet Touch here in the red handles. Quarter inch, three eighths inch Willows blenders, and then a couple smaller uh, rounds for the eyes. Got a number two and a three aught uh, round for those. So use whatever brushes that you've got. Princeton is our brush sponsor. We really like their products. And uh, thank you for providing, yeah, for providing them to us today. Um, go over our colors really quick here. I've got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, quinacridone, burnt orange, which is kind of an optional color today. We're not going to use much of it, just mostly in the eyes, maybe a little bit on the tree. Uh, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium red medium, uh, ultramarine blue, cobalt teal, yellow, uh, phthalo green, yellow shade. Gosh, lost my words there for a second. Ultramarine blue, or I'm sorry, uh, unbleached titanium titanium white and zinc white and this is my glazing medium the gloss glazing liquid that I like to use it's got a little bit of an extender in it uh, won't need much of it today but we probably will be glazing some of the fur after we get it on there there's going to be a couple layers I will warn you the koala is going to look worse before it looks better so <laughs> as with most animal paintings we do uh, it's all about the layering <laughs> the sketch is looking kind of creepy this kid, he, he already, <laughs> they have kind of creepy eyes, I have to say. I did when I, I didn't really notice that. They're super cute, but when you're just looking at those eyes, they are a little bit creepy. All right, so let's draw it out. I've already drawn it on my canvas, but uh, I thought I'd draw it real quick with you guys. So we're going to start out by kind of doing a, um, and I probably need to move this over, but you get the idea, a tree branch. It's coming angling in like this. This arm is coming over it, a little bit overlapping right here. There's the shoulder coming up to the head and there's a little probably hind leg or something back here. Maybe that's a baby, I don't know. Um, I thought about doing the baby with it. I really kind of wanted to, but that would have been twice the work on, and I wanted to do this on YouTube. So to keep the length short and uh, I don't like to do much over two hours on YouTube if I can help it on to Saturdays. So that's why we're doing the single koala today. There's the arm coming up, kind of wrapping around right here as it comes out a little bit more. Wrapping up and the hand, fingers kind of gripping it right here. There's part of the back of the hand. This knuckle comes up here, and then these two fingers are fused together. We've got, um, we're doing this, obviously, the wildflower fires are have been going on in Australia for a while. I think they're still going on. Last month was particularly devastating, and um, so we kind of, as soon as I saw that, we put a koala on their schedule as soon as we could get to it. So this is the earliest date we had available to do it, but... Um, we do have a uh, koala rescue adopt a koala um, link down in the description. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out after the video. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Good. I'm saying hi to everybody. All right. Awesome. 
Uh, I think I think I need to bring this up. I think that arm looks a little bit too long. <laughs> it looks, doesn't it look like a monkey uh, arm? It's looking a little I bit don't long. Know, but to his me. his arm's pretty long in that it is pretty, shot too. Pretty long. I feel like this body's kind of comes up a little higher though. Do you want me to be an arm model for you? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, public service announcement. Jelly Billy popcorn flavor. Not my favorite. <laughs> really gross. He's like, he's like, this is gross. Why don't you try it? This one, try it. I'm like, no, I'm not going to eat that. You just told me it's gross. Why would I eat it? <clears throat> it's like, here, this smells horrible. Smell it. <laughs> Does this smell bad to you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so rounding out the face here. Got another bad one? Black oh, black licorice. No, that's not good. Okay, okay awesome. so the head is about the top of that where the hand comes around. So just kind of measure that. That's kind of where you know. Uh, and then the... This is all kind of white-ish gray fur. I don't know. It's probably the other part of the shoulder coming around or something. I'm not really sure. But the ears right there, the ears right here. So you're going to kind of have a circle for the face almost. And then right about halfway is going to be the top of the nose. So kind of fill it that in half and then kind of do that curve for the top of the nose. The nose fills most of this middle section, like if you kind of split this bottom curve into three parts, one, two, three, you know, one, two, three, then that nose is going to fill this middle third here. Not the middle third this way, but this section down here, if that makes sense. And it's going to narrow in, come all the way to the, almost to the bottom. There's a little bit of a chin right here that comes up. Really cute. He's got these little kind of smile lines almost. And then the bottom of the nose is curved around. It's got these two little curves and the mouth comes out from the sides of that. So, curves in just a little bit and then widens out. So the bottom section is a little bit more narrow than this top section up here. And then right in here, there's these little nostrils. There and there. And then right up uh, level with the top of the head here is the top of the eyes are real close to the nose. And kind of do these. circle here and here and then this part kind of comes in like that and then there's some outline some skin that kind of outlines the lid all the way around it's a little bit this pinkish color and then their pupil is kind of like a cat eye it's got a slit and I'm going to curve it a little bit out just slightly, and then we'll have some highlights and things in there. Um, that'll probably be close enough. And then, to get that chin on there, there's like a double chin, kind of a little bit of fur. There's really not a whole lot of strong coloration. It's all pretty much the same gray, so it's just going to be kind of a subtle, subtle um, shadows and things to get, to get the shading on the face, right? So coming across there like that, and then these ears go out. I think the ears are what makes it cute. Kind of before the ears it wasn't so cute, but now it's cute. <laughs> I don't know how that worked, but <laughs> the 
baby koalas are super cute too. I, I really kind of wanted to paint a baby. This one I think is kind of, I don't think it's a full adult. I think it's kind of in between. Maybe. Okay, something like that. So there's our koala. And, you know, once I get kind of the main area, then I would go back in and, you know, adjust, make a little adjustments and things, you know, maybe adjust the size of the body. I don't know. He looks a little bit chunky here, but you get the idea. All right. Paint. So I'm going to just start on the background here. I'm going to get my number eight bright. Just started with a kind of a medium round for the background and I'm going to do it mostly in kind of teal blues and greens. I know there's some branches back here in our photograph too so I might add a little bit of that but not a, not a ton. I'm going to grab some of the burnt sienna. That will darken up. Might even grab a little bit of the ultramarine blue. It will darken up, make it a little bit more of a natural color so it's not so minty. And I'm just going to use this brush and along the edge there. I'm just going to kind of tap so I get kind of a Line and don't don't outline it too much because you don't want to have a line going all the way around it. So make sure that if you do outline it like that, that you go right back in and blend that out really quickly. So I'm blending it out a little bit from that outside edge there, kind of going overlapping my line just a little bit. Unbleached titanium. Just a word of caution for people in chat. Mm -hmm. Don't believe anything I say. <laughs> so they haven't figured that out yet. Are they? Did you mis mis Did you mislead them again? Well, one of our. Uh, Long time faithful viewers from Australia mm -hmm. has pointed out that the baby koala is a Joey. Yes. And so I said a toddler koala is a Joseph. <laughs> and they were like, no. And I said, then an, an adult koala is a Josephus. <laughs> so you may want to fact check, but <laughs> it's something like that. I hope they know you by now to not. Some do, some don't. Some do. do. <laughs> I always getting on to Mark for in the, the Facebook group, especially. He loves to mess with people. I think Julian just threw something at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. He's in a little bit more ultramarine blue over here. Sorry. Uh, I'm just going to apologize right off the bat for. <laughs> so uh, anyways somebody did ask a real question here it said yes. why do you choose not to paint the background first uh, like around the qual in the koala itself why do you paint around it and not oh uh, i just do it i for speed's sake so and the answer, correct answer is it would be hard to cover it up with the other pink colors that's true that too so this one, though, I'm going to paint mostly dark, so it really wouldn't matter as much. I mean, you could definitely paint the whole background. I thought about painting the whole background kind of a gray color because um, that wouldn't compete too much with this green. So, um, yeah, it's it's just up to you, whatever. But I didn't want to have to draw the koala live onto the canvas. I wanted it pre-done, so that takes time. We would never paint a live koala. 
Well, I just, it just takes a lot of time and I don't have time to edit. I've done that before where I've like, sometimes if it's a super simple animal or something, I'll do it live, but I really prefer having my time to make edits and stuff. And it takes time to kind of paint it and then look at it. You really, part of drawing is just kind of taking time to look at it. And that doesn't really play very well on live, you know, shows. So I uh, prefer to have my, my, the hardest part of the drawing done beforehand. So, and so I can take my time with it and don't have to rush. And then I can do the drawing, you know, like I did on paper, but I don't have to worry about that being perfect. If that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyhow, it's my, it's mainly a choice just for the video editing. If I wasn't, if I was doing it at home, I'd probably, um, we are home. Do the big, <laughs> <sighs> sorry. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Hello, everybody. All right. It's one of those days. That background is, is too dark, but we'll add more to it here in a minute. Let's go ahead and fill in the tree here. I'm going to use a little bit of that and quinacridone orange with the yellow oxide. The inside part of that tree is kind of a golden ochre color, it looks like. I'm not sure what kind of tree this is. Uh, maybe like a eucalyptus or something like that? Well, it doesn't. Or a gum tree? Well, the gum trees have a, like a smoother bark. They're real pretty. Hmm. They're um, kind of a whitish color, it seems like. Uh, but I could be wrong. This could be another variety. I don't know. I'm going to use a little bit of brown for the outside edges here. Burnt umber. I'm just kind of pulling in. This is going to take a couple of different layers of color to get the tree. So right now we're just laying down kind of the basics of the painting. The first layer is always kind of messy. I call it the ugly stage. So don't take too much time with it. Don't worry how it looks too much. You're just gonna, you're mainly trying to kind of get an undercoat on for your other colors to go on top of. And I kind of try to pick colors that I see in the painting or colors that are underneath your other main colors. So this reddish color is kind of British yellow colors kind of underneath some of the exposed to some of the areas where that dark bark is over the top. So we'll start with that and then when we put the dark color on top it'll kind of be underneath there. That's the idea at least. So, so this is a gum tree according to our Australian oh, cool. audience. Nice. He's having a snack. I don't know if it's like bubble gum or what, <laughs> but it's the eucalyptus is another name for the eucalyptus, I believe. Really? Yes. Mm. Bubble is better. Okay, I'm gonna use the black now and maybe a little bit of blue, but Go ahead and fill in most of this koala with this black. There's just so much of it underneath the white. I feel like it'll be good to have this base layer. Well, we got a question about whites. Mm -hmm. Somebody has said that they have only titanium white. Okay. Is there a much difference in the other whites, and do they need to buy them? 
The zinc white is, is a pretty helpful color to have. It is um, transparent. So um, let me grab a little bit of the regular white there. Um, so it uh, is helpful for things like eyes and clouds and mist and stuff like that. So it kind of depends on what you're painting. Um, but yeah, I find that the zinc white is quite a helpful color. I didn't use it much before I started painting landscapes, but when you're doing the landscapes, especially fog and things, you really, um, I, I can, I can do a demonstration of the two different ones here in a minute. We can do it over here on this. So, titanium white with glazing medium. There. And then this is zinc white all on its own. The difference is subtle, but you can see where, especially in these thinner areas along the edges, like you can get those edges to kind of disappear a little bit better. That white is just, even though it's transparent, it's still got a lot of um, opaqueness in it, just in inherently in the titanium white, it's, it's opaque. So you can't get rid of those opaque particles in it, even though you thin it down, they're still there. So, I mean, you can get it similar with using, um, glazing medium. So, you know, I don't think that it's, uh, it's a deal breaker. Like I, I would use that if I didn't have zinc white, I would totally use that and be fine with it. Um, the zinc white is just a little bit softer. So that's all. I'm going to grab the green here and try to kind of cover this up now. Give it a second layer. It's starting to lift because I that wasn't fully dried. Well, it was fully dried. It wasn't fully cured, mm. which it takes about a day or two, two to fully cure. So you <clears throat> can't really scrub on them too hard. All right. Let's keep going with the core. So I'm just looking at the reference photo. I'm trying to kind of block it in in ways where I can tell... Um, you know, the different parts of the animal, um, the arm from the leg and that kind of thing, or the arm from the back, just changing the color subtly. And some areas are going to be less dark black underneath than others, so I can use a little bit of lighter gray. In those areas and I'm looking at the direction that the fur is growing too so that when I'm tapping in this color I'm getting that that a little bit of directionality to the somebody has uh, said they finished their swan paintings oh. and they would like to know do you think a blue background would look good on it oh, yeah Definitely. I think it would be pretty. We uh, we had one of our our members did a paint party. She said the only way, way she could get her husband to paint it with them, with her, is to do a paint party with several couples. So they mm -hmm. had several couples do it in their living room, which is it's funny to me. Like I do these videos, but I never really think about. The reality of people actually painting along you know <laughs> so just like the idea of a whole room full of people painting and listening to what we're saying just cracks me up 
Like, you know, because I'm like, what did we talk about? <laughs> like, <laughs> I hope we didn't say anything too embarrassing. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't ever really occur to me until I start to think about it. I don't know. It was just funny. So <laughs> that was what I was thinking. <laughs> she, but, uh, but yeah, they turned out good. It was cute. That was fun. It looked like they had a good time. And one of the guys that made me think about it, because one of the guys, it was like he painted with his wife. So he did a blue background. She did oh, a white yeah, background. Right, yeah. <laughs> so it was yeah. like half and half. I thought that was great. <laughs> it's like I would have liked to have been in on that conversation. <laughs> 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 like it's not going to match. That's okay. The, I want mine blue. The conversation while they were painting or later that evening? <laughs> After they got home. <laughs> Either one. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody might want to check in on him, make sure everything's make okay. Sure. <laughs> make sure he's doing all right. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I think I would have gone on. Mark, know, Mark knows better than to do something like that, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or doesn't know. I don't. I shouldn't say that like, you know. like. Oh, no, no. It's, 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 like, <laughs> it's, just, it's like the whole beak. <laughs> what? It's like with the beak on, on the swan. <laughs> You're like, what happened over there? <laughs> Went off the rails I, hard. I, I really don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Were you listening? Believe it or not, I Probably really not. wasn't trying to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Just if you missed the swan video, it's pretty priceless. It's really good. Mark did great, though. I mean, honestly... That's and I think that's a good project. Somebody was saying they were going to be doing it with their grandkids this weekend. Uh, she had our grandkids. Uh, it was Thursday. She couldn't watch the. She was one of my t- ten dollar patron thing, and we do a weekly chat with them. Um, and uh, she said she had her grandkids over that day, so I hope that went well for her. It's like they're all painting the swans for their parents. So I thought that was cute. That's cool. Cute idea. Yeah. I'm going to get that ear kind of dark right here. Just trying to, again, kind of darken up some of these areas where I know there's a lot of black underneath the white. And I'm just looking at the, you can see it on the reference photo, how much black there is underneath that white and the areas that are the darkest. That's where I'm kind of trying to get this dark black on the armpit and things so and again don't worry about what it looks like at this point it's gonna look like a hot mess that's pretty normal so just kind of trying to get the main colors on here and when you're doing this make sure you come in just a little bit off the outside at border so when you're um, drawing it um, you can go right up to the edge but um, that's why I went over the top of my drawn line with the green and here I'm not going right I'm I'm not going all the way over that edge I'm coming just inside of it because when we do our final layer we want it to overlap but if we do it right up to the edge right now then when we overlap it, it's going to be that much wider. So you're going to have it, everything's going to get bigger. Um, and it'll end up being too big. So you just kind of have to narrow everything down a little bit when you're doing your first layers. How's it going, hon? Super fantastic. Good. You're doing good over there, too. Thanks. So far, so good. And honestly, we could we could do the painting with this. It would be a little bit different style. So you could choose to, you know, do it in like a bigger brushstroke style. Um, I I think that would look really nice. So, you know, you don't have to have the the um, smaller smaller brushes the fuzzy brushes and do it the way I'm doing you know feel like you, there's a lot of different ways to interpret this and a lot of different styles you could use to do it one of the very first bear paintings that I did I did a bear and a fox and they were both in a very like loose 
style, larger brush brushes and bigger, wider brush strokes instead of the small brush strokes. So I think we're going to go with a little bit more realistic style. So this will be a little bit, we'll use smaller brush brushes and brush strokes. But um, if you want to go with more of an impressionist style and per interpretive kind of thing, you could use a bigger brush stroke and go a little bit faster with it. And that would look cool too. Okay, so coming around here, I'm gonna add more white. Even though I'm seeing the dark gray underneath, I just, I don't want to go too dark. Around those eyes. We've got lots of time to add more colors to this, so we don't have to have it perfect. Getting the close as we can to what we're seeing underneath. So in these little areas right here, I'm seeing some dark under the chin. So I'm going to go ahead and put some dark kind of right up next to the chin there. Just imagine waking up and seeing that. <laughs> Some kind of dark on the under there. So I hope everybody's doing great today. Yep. Welcome to the silent part of the show. The one. <laughs> silent. Mm -hmm. When we're I'm concentrating. Where we're communicating through mime. <laughs> but you can't see us, so. Oh, gosh. Right now, Angela's trapped in a box. <laughs> I'm not. Stop it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Goofy. <laughs> oh my goodness. So what are you doing in your Patreon group this month? We are painting um, a still life. I'll pull it out here. We're in the very, very early stages. This is after two hours. This is what we're painting. So it'll look like that uh, in a couple more weeks, hopefully. It may take us, uh, I'm, I'm guessing this is going to be an eight hour easily, maybe 10 hour painting. And so we're about an hour and 45 minutes in at this point. Um, so we're still pretty early. That's the, that's, oops, that's the um, $10 patreon group that i mentioned earlier that we do that on thursdays and we work on it all month long and if we don't finish it this month we'll work on it next month um so but it's a fun group it's a smaller it's just me so marks marks will work so i i uh, chat and answer questions and things it's a little bit more intimate and slower paced than the YouTube public videos, but we have a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to that one. I've been wanting to paint that for a while. That's been on my kind of to-do list for several months, but we just couldn't, we had to get through Christmas and stuff. It just wasn't quite the right time to do it. So now we're working on it. It's going to be fun. And then, uh, and we've done two other still lives that kind of go along with it. I wish I had them out. I don't have them to show you but 
Um, they're packed away. But um, there's one that was like a tangerine uh, still life that's got some, um, like an urn, kind of a Middle Eastern, like an urn kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And then the other one was a, a flower vase with some large white flowers looks like piano peonies maybe with some blue fabric so the the both of those are kind of complementary so and those are all included with the those are previous obviously you'd watch the replay but they're all included with the same ten dollar level you can watch all the old ones as well as the new ones so it's a pretty decent deal plus you get all of the bonus video stuff so we did the bonus video This was the bonus video that we did uh, two weeks ago or last weekend. Last mm-hmm. weekend. Yeah. So, yeah. And that was like five hours. And that's the $5 level. For the $5 level. Above. Right. So $10 folks get both. They get all the $5 stuff plus they get their own video once a week. And everybody get these YouTube ones for free. Yep. The YouTube. We, yeah, we do. We do about 10 videos a month. Two of them are paid. Eight of them are free. Yep. So <laughs> we get paid for 20% of the work I do. <laughs> Still a good deal. <laughs> and I enjoy it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, and thank you to all the, I think there's like over 2,400 supporters right now on Patreon. So thank it's you. It's incredible. To everybody. Yeah. It's amazing. Really well beyond my wildest expectations of that. All right, so I got most of that done. Let's go ahead and put in the nose. I'm going to use black and blue for that. A little bit more ultramarine blue. We'll start with the ultramarine blue and add black. That way you're not going to get too much black in there. Yeah, there we go. This is really, um, if you have Payne's Gray, this is the color of Payne's Gray. It's a... Uh, Ultramarine blue and black. Get again, get it kind of as close as you can, but if it's not quite right, you can you, we can have time to edit. We're gonna be layering over all of this, so just trying to get the main outline of all of our shapes in. And then if you have any thick areas, you want to smooth those out. So when you're painting these in, the way I'm doing the layers, you want you want the smooth under layers. That way the upper layers don't have to fight with little ridges and things. So I went through and if you look at it, it's all kind of fairly smooth. There's not a lot of thick um, thickness. That's the way I, I like to do since I glaze and do lots of layers. Um, if you have too much of the thickness in your paint, it just doesn't work with layering very well. Okay, let's use the red with the unbleached titanium. Use a little bit of the orange there too. Maybe a little bit of white. You know what? I'm going to use quinacridone magenta because I feel like it's a little bit brighter pink and this red is just not doing it for me. So I'm going to add the quinacridone to our list of colors. Just need a little bit more of a rosy color. That red cadmium red just can't quite do it. It's a little too orange kind of like doing paint improv here 
<laughs> well, I was kind of on the fence. I was I wasn't sure if I wanted the quinacrid I needed the quinacridone. I should have just added it in there, but Okay, and that bottom edge of it is kind of irregular, so it doesn't have to be. It's actually kind of irregular all the way around, so it doesn't have to be real smooth. Let's go ahead and use this color. Maybe a little bit of gray with it. Around the eyes. Using some of that darker gray there on the nose too. Wow. Okay. Not focused. It's not focused at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure why it didn't focus for you. It looks like I'm a use the the same pink under here too. It's on the under the mouth. Looks like a what? What are you saying? A koala from the wrong side of the tree. <laughs> Like, come at me, bro. <laughs> you don't want to mess with this. I've heard they're not cut quite that nice. Like, we think, <laughs> think they're kind of cool, cute and cuddly, but they're not actually all that nice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but... <laughs> Okay, I'm going to use, actually, let me switch to a smaller brush here. It'll just be easier. I'm going to grab the Quinacridone burnt orange hair. And I'll probably add some other colors to this. This is not going to be our final color, but I'm going to use that in the eye. Now we're talking creepy. They can have like red, oh, red yeah. eyes. Laser eyes. Creepy red eyes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank, thanks for joining us today. <laughs> If you give a thumbs up, like, subscribe. <laughs> we'll try to make cute animals creepy for you. <laughs> oh, the black's helping. Yeah, here you go. Shut up. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Believe it or not, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> Just hang in there, everybody. <laughs> Come together. She did say it was going to be ugly, but she didn't say it was going to be creepy. <laughs> so, hmm. now, so now we have the creepy stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's super creepy. <laughs> it's worse. It just keeps getting worse. <laughs> I swear to you, it'll be better eventually. We will pull this together. This is a side of koalas that Australia doesn't want you to see. <laughs> <laughs> it looks a little strung out.
<laughs> Somebody this said, guy is looking up that way. Let's <laughs> yeah. fix those peoples. Somebody said that it's a zombie koala. So there you go. Yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like right now. Round that out a little bit. Okay. All right, so this is the layer one. Let's go ahead and zoom out and see him in all his glory here. Yeah, we're pretty much done. <laughs> if, if I was teaching the lesson, we would be done you right would be now. done right now? Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of what happens when you are painting uh, for the first time is... Uh, or a lot I see with beginners is that you you look at the colors on top so you look at the koala's face and things and you see oh that's a light gray so you go in that there and do the light gray around which is like I said and it's fine because it's a it's a stylistic choice but you're not going to have the layers underneath the dark layers underneath if you go with the light colors first so um, you always look at what's underneath the darker um, colors and put those first and then you're going to have all these you know beautiful layers at once you finish um, but if you don't do those dark layers then you just can't get the depth that you're going to want so we have when we finish he's going to have a nice rounded appearance and have lots of depth in his fur <clears throat> all righty so let's work on that background some more Still not quite where I want it to be, so I'm going to grab the glazing medium and some of the teal. I had a little bit of blue in there and some of the unbleached titanium. Unbleached titanium is just like a, um, a more of a warmer white, so it's got a little bit of yellow tones in it. So it's going to kind of green out our teal colors too. And I'm just going to do it in our background here. Do the second layer. We soften that up a little bit. Yeah, so to remind everybody, Mona posted the link in the description, but down below the video also, uh, or she posted, posted the link in the chat. Oh, good. But also down in the description is that link to the Adopt a Koala. Yeah. Uh, to help them out recover. Yeah, they've had, I, I was reading some statistics, it's pretty sad. They've lost billions of animals. Mm. And a lot of habitat, it's mainly the habitat that they're, well, you know, obviously they couldn't, couldn't afford to lose the animals either, but the habitat is going to be hard for them to recover. They were already having issues with that, so they were already having struggles with the koala populations with disease and things, and it did not help. I was like, kind of kicks them while they're down. So, I'll put out some more of that. I like this softer, I like this color is definitely prettier, a little softer looking. You're seeing a little bit of that original. Layering come through, depending on how much glazy medium you use, you can have more or less of that background green showing through. Up to you. 
gonna go right up to those ears again. Did I touch my microphone? Sorry. Okay. It was a close thing. do some leaves in the background here coming down thought that might be look nice just some like subtle leaves <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice today I don't know what color are you using right now. This is ultramarine blue and, sorry, ultramarine blue, green, and teal. So I'm using them kind of interspersing and just going back and forth between them. And I'm adding a little bit of the burnt sienna if I feel like it gets too bright, you know, um, just to tone it down. It's basically the same colors we used in the background. I used a little bit lighter tones over on this side. I'm probably going to add a little bit more of the dark colors in the corners. Adding dark to your corners when you're doing this kind of a background will help pull the focus in. It kind of creates that vignette um, and so it helps kind of draw the focus in towards your subject in the middle. So it's always kind of a good idea just to kind of darken up those corners just a little bit. Especially when you're kind of playing with them like this, you do, there's not a whole lot of anything going on in this background. It's just kind of random colors. Let's go ahead and grab some of this lighter color. Yeah, that second cup really just helps kind of smooth everything out, make it a little bit more finished looking. Just not wanting that background of the canvas peeking through like it was. the green. I'm going to add the ultramarine blue and green here. Create kind of a dark teal. And it's mixing with this lighter color that I've got on my brush already. I didn't clean my brush out so I'm just going to use it to kind of create some very soft looking And I'm blending them a little bit as I do it so they're not super dark. They have this long tapered leaf. Just letting them be very kind of almost impressionistic. Letting that... And this background is still wet so it's kind of mixing with it a little bit. I'm just going to add just a few. It doesn't have to be a lot, but I think it'll help kind of give it that atmosphere that we're looking for, kind of more of that foresty feeling. And the 
if you want to get a native Australian really fired up, just call him a koala bear. <laughs> I got emails about it when I sent out my email, my schedule, put out my schedule. There's a lot of things we'll put up with, but we will not put up with that. <laughs> it's all fun and games until somebody calls it a bear. Calls it a bear. And then it's on. It's like, no. It's in the same family as a kangaroo. Yeah, the wallaby is its closest relative from what I read this morning. Mark didn't believe me that their babies were called joeys. He's like, no, that's a kangaroo. kangaroo. I'm like, yeah, no, that's what I read. So, I like, so is a wallaby kind of like a honeybee? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Goofy. Thanks. <sighs> I know, you got to put up with me. You got the sigh today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not loving it back there. I don't know if I love what's going on over here. I may take those out. I feel like it's a little kind of, I don't know. Like there's not enough room in there to kind of make sense of what's happening. So what I may do is just kind of, yeah, that's probably going to work better. Just blend it all kind of out so it's all sort of that middle green color and just leave a few like little streaks in it. So it's like, okay, there's maybe some leaves back here, but we can't really tell what they are. Instead of having them be, and leave the kind of more defined ones over to the sides here. We have, an, <clears throat> we have an art question. Okay. A person would like to know about how much of each paint color do you put out? Mm, I'd say about a um, dime's worth, maybe a quarter nickel in between. Not a lot. Um, it's kind of a fine line. You want, you have to have enough, even if you're not using a lot of that color, I need to put out at least that much because if I don't, if I put a little teeny tiny bit, it'll dry almost immediately. I've got to leave it um, a, enough um, paint there to kind of, it kind of huddles and they kind of keep each other um, from drying out. So the more you spread it out, and that's why I always pull from the front side. If you see how I'm pulling my paint, I'm always pulling it from this front side and leaving this back side undisturbed. That way all this paint in here is all staying uh, moist. It's all staying together. It's also going to kind of form a little bit of a film like this eventually will get kind of hard back here. And, um, that air will kind of dry out that top layer, but underneath it, it'll be all that soft and wet uh, paint. So um, even two hours from now, if I keep spraying it, keep it moist and just work from the front side here, this part underneath will be protected and uh, it'll stay wet back there. And that kind of that film that forms over the top of it will protect it. Um, but if I was to pull my paint from the middle of it and make expose all of the middle part to air, then it would dry out a lot faster. So I don't know. That's not even what she asked about. But uh, it's... All right. So that I'm not happy with. I'm going to still mess with that a little bit. I feel like it needs a little something, something. So I'm going to grab some more of that like teal and just kind of color got a little muddy, a little something, I don't know, I don't like it, so we'll just work on it a little bit more. Paint's 
not wanting to stick right there. You can see what happens when you mess with your paint too long. This little area right here is starting to dry, and so it's not wanting to stick. So I gotta go back in with some, just a, like a little bit of thick paint and just kind of dab it over and leave it. Don't mess with it anymore. bit of the ultramarine blue and thalo blue that or thalo green that was kind of our original leaf color I've got a little bit of white in my brush now so it's a little bit lighter just adding a little bit of that okay This color to kind of come down here so it looks like it's all kind of connected otherwise it kind of looks like background is separate from down here let it set and dry otherwise we're gonna just be lifting off what we've already done There's a lot of layers already on there all right let's work on our tree so I'm gonna get some brown burnt umber and let's see let's get some blue ultramarine blue leave it more brown than blue so just graying out that brown a little bit. And get up under here. And I've got the 3 8 inch Willow's Blender. I'm going to add my shadow on that log. Goes all the way down. And I'm just scrubbing it. Almost laying it flat. I'm just going to kind of scrub Leave a little bit of that orangey color showing through brush loaded fairly thick I almost let that dry too much that was starting to get a line there you don't want that so just Zigzagging, letting the paint kind of come off the brush in random shapes. Let's get along that edge there, define that a little bit.
it's okay if the paint is too light under in these open areas. We'll, we'll probably sh glaze over all of this, so that's so fine if, if it looks a little bit too light. It's a lot easier to darken up something than to make it lighter. yellow oxide. I kind of covered up too much of it right here. See how the color going back on is a lot different from that original color because it was going over the top of white. When I put that lighter color on top of the darker brown, it's not going to be as bright. So I can add a little bit of white to it if I need to get it back up to that same brightness. It's just going to take a couple extra layers. So that's why I was saying that it's easier to get a color, you know, darker than lighter because you can glaze over the top of the light color and make it darker immediately, but with gl with lighter colors, you kind of have to, sometimes you have to add white to them, and then it dulls the color, and then you have to add another layer of the original color back on top of that whitish color. So I'm just going back in here with some of the yellow oxide. Again, it's going to go look kind of like a hot mess at first, so... Fine. Could also use a um, large flat brush. Let's see if that works better. I don't think it does. I think I think the this one's already got some texture, so it kind of helps. Let me go nice and dark back in here. Burnt umber, a little bit of ultramarine blue, just kind of to tone it down a little bit, darken it up, get a little bit more gray. Doing circular brush strokes, almost barely touching that brush down so that it goes on a little bit roughly. And this is one of the few times when I do not mind having some texture in my paint. So I leave the bumpies in my brush strokes. I don't smooth everything out. Because then when I do my upper layers on top of this, it'll I'll have those kind of textures underneath. It'll just make it that much easier to get the upper textures I'm looking for. I'm 
Mark's just hanging out over there. Yes, I'm enjoying having the seat to myself. <laughs> Don't say the name. <laughs> Don't wake the beast. Don't wake our CIT. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I took some funny pictures of her this morning. She was covering the edge of the couch. Mm-hmm. Pretty funny. Why she sits like that, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. So she's our studio friend, but she tends to like to get in the way of things and insert herself. See, now I can't use those pictures on my cat influencer page. Oh, sorry. Thanks. (laughs) Now I got to change my brain. I saw the perfect... I saw the perfect thing, and we were out at TJ Maxx. Mark took the day off for Valentine's Day, which is super sweet. So we got to hang out together all day. Really fun. And uh, we went to TJ Maxx because that's how we roll. That's right. <laughs> it's about our, our speed. That, that's what you know, those international superstars do. <laughs> we go to the discount store. date nights. <laughs> on Valentine's Day. <laughs> super romantic but I saw like a (laughs) it was headphones that had little cat ears Mm -hmm. it was all gold and then a cocktail shaker (laughs) and a little keychain and a little uh, shot glass and I'm like that's how if I was a cat influencer that's right (laughs) you'd (laughs) get to be on brand right there (laughs) That's awesome. Not to sh- shake anybody from being a cat influencer. I love those photos. So mm-hmm. if you're a cat influencer, good on you. <laughs> hey, uh, somebody's asked a painting question. Yes. Sorry. So okay. somebody, uh, she said that you mentioned glazing. Yes. Uh, the whole painting. I just don't understand glazing. Okay. So will we be doing that at the end? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll do some glazing. It's not as good as glazing donuts. So don't get your hopes <laughs> up too high. <laughs> Everybody, so <laughs> just you know. saying, it's not what you. Th- it's not what Mark thought. At right, first, Mark right. was like glazing. Yes. And his ears perked up. And then it's like, oh no, oh. there are no donuts involved. <laughs> <laughs> so disappointing. Yep. <laughs> Life is full of disappointments. <laughs> What? I'm looking over here for my half chewed licorice jelly bean. Gross. And the uh, popcorn flavored jelly bean. <laughs> I think maybe art, actually. Those are not on your diet. I don't know how, why you even had those. This is my art installation over here. <laughs> you can. Uh... <laughs> I'm not even going to go it's, there. It's not like anything, like a banana nailed to the wall or anything, but Here, it's better. Here's a flower break. Whoa, there's my flowers, Valentine's flowers. Aren't they pretty? <laughs> Ridiculous. Love it. Love it. And I also got some these ones. I didn't put them together because they come in different kinds, but I took a bunch of pictures, and it smells so good in here. And there's more out there that we do. Yeah, there's more, too. I got some of these. This one was kind of dead or hurting. So it was already broken off real short. Same thing with this guy. He, yeah, so. No, for Mark. I stumbled upon my my Valentine flowers the accidentally. Thing she, the thing she finds when she goes through my phone. <laughs> I was looking at pictures of Liam that I didn't know if I had. So I was looking for pictures of our grandbaby mm-hmm. on your phone. And that was happened to be on there, too. And she found pictures of flowers. I found pictures of flowers. And I just offhand said, I hope that's not what I'm getting for Valentine's Day. And of course, I would save pictures of things I'm not getting. <laughs> they were not good, honey. 
It wasn't good. I'm sorry. Well, I tried. I even told you what kind of flowers I wanted, and it was like, I don't see one cabbage rose in the picture that you had on your phone. I even took notes. I don't know. They were not what I asked for. They weren't, like, ugly, necessarily. They just weren't, like, I was like, honey. So... So she's, then he she's then he was like pictures then he like, was like well if I don't know what kind to get you then they didn't have them so here you look and see if you can find something better and then I found them it was a miracle I was like <laughs> <laughs> on the very same site where you ordered the in my defense ugly towers. I was trying to get ones that were already in. <laughs> An arrangement in a vase. That's true. I did have to spend an hour putting, cutting them and putting These were all just like a bunch of this flower and a bunch of that flower. (laughs) They don't care. They don't care. We'll get back to the... Painting. Painting. Okay. You're done putting up paints. All right. Back to your regular schedule. Creepy koala painting. (laughs) All right. So adding a little bit of blue to the... I made a dark... Uh, well, just black, and then I added some white here to it. This one's like a lighter version. This one in the middle here has got a little bit of the blue in it. And I'm going to use it with this one, too. Yeah. We, uh... we have issues with the flowers. <coughs> this is my problem, because I complain about... I shouldn't complain. I should just be happy with anything. I have one of the more stressful husband jobs <laughs> because I'm married to an artist who knows her flowers. I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a flower snob. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. You did good, honey. Well, when you <laughs> basically ordered them for yourself. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, I love my flowers. They're so pretty. You did a good job picking them out, huh? Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so starting on, I started with the dark gray here. I'm going to go ahead and do the lighter white-ish color right along that edge. And I'm using the 3 8 inch Willis Blender and barely touching it down, so I'm getting kind of some fuzziness along that edge and as I overlap I'm gonna um, try not to create patterns so that's the main thing about fur that can be difficult is that it's the tendency is to kind of create these um, patterns as you layer so you want to go over the top of what you've done before just a little bit. So let me see if we can, let's start it over here, honey, and I'll do a section here and show what I'm talking about. So I'm zooming in? Yeah, zoom in a little bit. We'll do it along the arm here. So right here along the arm, I want this outline edge to be kind of fuzzy. So I'm going to go along that, but I'm going to, Even though I'm going in a straight line, I'm still going to go back and forth, up and down a little bit. I don't know if you can tell that, but I'm kind of layering. I'm not going in a straight line like this. this, It can create some kind of patterning that we're trying to avoid. So I'm going to go above it and below it and above it, below it, and softened it up a little bit and that will create kind of a soft fuzzier look and then I'm gonna almost go immediately into like a little bit darker fur color here using that lighter white-ish color right there along the edge and just layering you can see how like each one of these brush strokes is kind of creating its own little blip there so I'm trying to smooth those out so I don't see those as much 
And these are starting to turn. I'm, I'm doing these kind of in the wrong direction. They're supposed to be kind of going this way. So I'm just going to kind of go over the top of that and change the direction of that fur just a little bit. And then it's rounding out this way. So it's kind of coming around. As you can see, I'm tapping. And just barely touching the tip of the brush. I don't have a lot of paint on here. I don't need a lot of paint for it to create that texture we're looking for. And if I've got an area that's mostly white, like right in here, I can go back in with a little bit of that white and just go back over where I've already done. You just want to be sure that you don't overdo and create a clump because it can be easy to kind of end up with sort of a clump of color there and cover up all of our dark area that we've put underneath. So see how I'm leaving lots of that dark color showing through. And then glazing, somebody was asking about that, we'll be doing at the very end. But we'll, what we're doing with glazing is we're just going to be adjusting the tone and color. Um, we, can, we can adjust the darkness. We can make it darker in areas. So like in our shadow areas, we can add, you know, like a little bit of a darker shadow in some areas. And we'll definitely be doing that, especially like in the armpit areas and things like that. Um, and all it is is just a transparent layer of paint. So um, we're adding lots of the glazing medium and we're going to be darkening up certain areas. And then you can also change the color. So if, say if I want a little bit of a blue tone in the fur somewhere and I don't have it in this initial layer and I decide, you know, hey, I want to, it to look a little bit more blue then I can add a little bit of blue with my glaze and glaze over the top of certain areas and add tone tone the color a different way. And I'm leaving kind of these, you can see these lines here in the fur. There's kind of these little uh, lines in our koala. Really want to call him a koala bear. I'm trying really hard not to. I think it's an Americanized thing. It's just like kind of what I grew up calling it. It seems like it's that way for all over the world. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Well, they look like a teddy bear, so that's probably right. why. And they climb trees, and they growl. Do but, they growl? But they're not mammals. Well, I guess they are mammals, aren't they? I they give birth to yeah, live young. Right. Yeah. I think but so. then they have a they're pouch. Marsupials. Just kind of creating those little layers of are there. And then down in here it's a lot darker. Whoops. A lot darker. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit more of the black and use that in this area. Just a little bit darker. And Line that over the top. And where I don't want lines to form, then that's where I kind of make sure that I'm going back and forth and up and down and really kind of just filling it in as randomly as I can and not leaving those lines. I did over here. 
always paying attention to the direction that I'm seeing the fur growing in our picture. It's kind of rounding out this way and heading off this direction as it comes around that corner. And if you get it too too light or cover too much of it up, we can always go back in and add more of the black. So, say like right in here, I feel like it needs a little bit of the black fur, maybe like right in here. We can always go back in and add that. The top, you just need to, if you do that, just wipe your brush off, get some of that lighter gray and kind of overlap it because the black is not the fur color it's the shadow so it's not going to be the main color that's on top we want that to be the, the gray the lighter gray I should say okay let's get some of the white and like just looking at the areas where I'm seeing the lightest little bit, it's a fur. Just adding a little bit of that. Tiny little brush strokes. And they're not very long brush strokes, so that's why I'm kind of tapping and just really kind of keeping them pretty small. They're pretty short napped. So, oops. except for up in the ears, you're not going to really see these really long furs. That's another reason why I go ahead, went ahead and chose this brush instead of like a rake brush. A rake brush would work really well. And I may actually pull out my rake brush to do the ears. I didn't really think about it, but I might need it for up in there. Or the, it's called the Fil Filbert Greenier in the, um, this brush here. So it's got separation between the tips. It's almost like a fan brush in a way, but it'll work really well for those longer hairs. So, okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's do the lighter white areas. That's not true white. It's going to have some gray in it be a lot lighter than what we just did and we did the background a little bit lighter on these so it won't be as I don't know why I just did that big huge thing there these are a little bit longer though I need those shorter This area's got a gray belly right there. Just covering over that dark. There we go. And then there's like a shadow right in there. These are all kind of going in weird, off, you know, odd directions. So it's kind of coming down. 
in. Kind of down from the chin area and then folding in on itself a little bit in here so they're all kind of laying in odd directions. Looks like it's kind of swooping up this way. These ones look like they're coming up this direction. questions for now? Uh, let's see. People wanted to know if there were poisonous spiders in Sweden. Mm. So you can tell we're paying attention to what you're doing. I see. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm just by myself. <laughs> mm. It's awesome. No, I've been in chat. I I get it. I've done it. So I know. It's only so much time art talk you can do. You get a <laughs> How much? So much koala talk. Right. Somebody asked if I was painting, and the answer is no. <laughs> I'm not painting. Then somebody said he's making a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. Which, right this moment, I'm not. But I am for our seeds. Yes, he's making a seed, seed spreadsheet. So we know when to plant what and where. All that. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. The neighbor with the noisy vehicles. Yeah. Check. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have to remember to say like, subscribe. Yes. Check out the videos, the Amazon store, the yes. brush guys. And yeah, neighbor, I did. Neighbor well. with, and neighbor with loud vehicles. So we're just going through our checklist here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if you need some brushes, scroll down below the video, thebrushguys.com. Yep. 5% off with the code Angela Fine Art. Mm -hmm. And there's a link there that takes you to Angela's recommended list of brushes. Yes, all kinds of brushes in there. Most all the ones that I use in my videos are on that list, so. So this is the kind of a medium gray here. I'm just going to try to tone between that light area and the face now. Light there coming off the mouth, and then it kind of comes around the cheek there. And um, I do sometimes get comments about people like saying, you know. Um, that I don't explain enough, you know, what I'm doing. This kind of painting 
is one of the more advanced ones. So on the advanced paintings, I don't do as much technique. Um, I, d I mainly are kind of talking to you about what colors I'm using when and that kind of thing and what brushes I would do. And, and um, I don't do a lot of like explaining of how I'm holding the brushes or, you know, that kind of thing. Um, those brush, those videos are like the swan video that we did with Mark. Those are going to be the, the beginner videos. So if you're like, um, you know, wanting to work up to something like this, that was, that's where I would start is on a video like that. It'll kind of give you some of the more basics, um, of working with acrylics and then, you know, graduate to something more advanced like this one that we're working on today. After you, I wouldn't try this as my first painting. This is going to be, you know, much more of an advanced painting. Um, and you can usually tell too by the amount of time that it takes me. So, you know, if a painting is taking me three, four hours, it's going to be an advanced painting. If it, you know, two, two hours, it's going to be kind of one of the more immediate, intermediate uh, paintings. And then, uh, you know, one hour or one and a half hours are going to be the beginner paintings. So we're already at an hour and a half here and we're definitely not done, you know. So um, that just, I know, I know it can be, well, I don't know. I just, I would, I, I think that uh, when you're learning to paint, that it's good to just set yourself up for success. So, you know, just like you would do if you were learning to ski or something, you'd start on the bunny slopes. If you were learning to play the piano, you'd learn with your chords and easier songs to start with. Same thing with painting. I feel like if you start with a little bit easier um, subjects, get those behind under your belt, get, you know, get a little bit of confidence and work your way up to something like this. This would be something that I would, you know, I'm not dis not saying don't try it. I'm just saying, you know, I think there's a balance. There's, there's uh, something like this. If you're not ready for it, can be really frustrating, a frustrating painting. That's, I think, when I get comments, you know, from people I'm like, Yep, it's just like everything, you know, you wouldn't enter your kid into a marathon when they're just learning to walk. Right. A little bit darker here, just going to round out this chin area. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, just like anything else, you just got to kind of know. Give yourself a chance to be a beginner. <laughs> like, get a, you know, give yourself a little bit of time just to learn some of the basics and then, you know, jump into something like this. But uh, Somebody wants to know which brush are you using? This is that 3 8 inch um, Willis Blender. Okay. And then somebody said they know you've been painting for over 30 years, but how long have you been teaching? Almost that amount of time. Honestly, I, it's funny. I jumped into teaching pretty quickly as soon as I felt fairly comfortable with what I was doing. So I remember doing it when I was pregnant with Jordan. So that was 93 and I had been painting for or teaching for about a year or two before that. So probably in the early nineties, 1990, 91, something like that. Probably 92. 91, 92 is probably when I about started. So how long would that be? 20 years? Something. So pretty. And off and on. I, you know, I'd teach a couple years and then I'd not teach. And then I'd teach a couple years and I'd, you know. And uh, I did a lot of uh, craft stuff too. And we did decorative painting. So when I first started teaching, it was decorative painting technique. So it was all the floating and we worked on wood and you know, it was very, very different than this. And uh, I only started teaching the 
fine art painting or the, you know, the canvas painting in 2005, I think. Somewhere around there. So. It was a fateful trip. Yeah, it was after we went to France. I hadn't, I'd actually kind of taken a break from painting. I had gone to work full time and, and then, uh, we had another baby and so I had to be back home and painting was kind of a, a I say it kept me sane. <laughs> we had three boys, so <laughs> I need something <laughs> for me. Well, I have three boys. She has four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need some black. I didn't go quite dark enough under here, so I'm just going to use a little bit of black. So, yeah, that's kind of how we ended up. Well, and I, I did kids' classes. I found that I... Um, really enjoyed teaching to kids almost more than adults just because kids are easier on themselves they're not they're not gonna um get as frustrated with themselves you know it it was it was hard for me I just didn't like teaching to somebody who you know I don't, I don't like to disappoint people so you know I just I want you to have the best experience you can. So that's why I do such a variety of paintings on YouTube because I know not everybody's ready for something like this. So I want to give you something that you can start with and then something you can work up to. It's adding some of this darker... Yeah, I ended up doing a bunch of kids' classes. I was doing kids' classes um, locally, hauling all my stuff down to Hobby Lobby and doing homeschool class and then an after-school class and did that for years, several years. I had some girls who started when they were like six and they... We did it until they were 17, I think. <laughs> so we did for 11 years. Taught those girls. That was pretty cool. That was sad. Now they're all in college. <laughs> mm -hmm. I continued teaching them. That even it, that I didn't teach any. I didn't take any new students. It was like them. And I had a class of three girls that were had been with me from the time they were really little. And I was doing YouTube full time, but I still couldn't give up teaching them. So we did it for several couple of years while I was busy with YouTube. But I finally, once they went off to college, I stopped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I do miss them. There's some good little artists too. Okay. So here's an interesting question for you. Yes. They want to know that, do you ever get frustrated with your paintings? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's certain paintings where, um, I'm trying to think the last time it happened. There's certain paintings where you, um, I really wish that I <clears throat> had the luxury of like letting, of stopping and just like coming back to it, you know? There's especially like sometimes some of the bonus videos that we do because we're trying to finish a six hour painting in one, you know, in one day. And that's really unrealistic. That's one of the things that I like about doing the the um, Thursday videos um, because I if I get to a point where I just need to stop on the painting, I can say, OK, well, we're going to continue this next week. But with the bonus videos, I can't do that. <laughs> so. And like sometimes I get like two, three hours into the painting and I'm like, I don't know how this is going to end. <laughs> <laughs> and I really wish I just had time to just kind of look at it and think about it and before I did anything more to it. But, you know, 
So those are the kind of frustrating things. I'm pretty tenacious about it, though, so I will continue working on something until I like it. I don't usually stop and not, not finish a painting anyway, so. It's, all right, I'm just layering this dark. I'm trying to leave a little bit of cheek. I'm not happy with how this fur is laying down. I might have to switch to the smaller brush, but... Let's just go ahead and get a layer of paint on here and then we can go back in and, or I should say a layer of fur on here. And then we can go back in and kind of adjust. I'm kind of fiddling with this face too much right now. Somebody would like to know that if they don't have a blender, what kind of brush would you recommend? Um, you can get this kind of... Um, fuzziness from a brush that's like maybe an older brush um, or you could use a um, like a hog bristle brush uh, let me see I'm gonna see if I can find out I don't know if I have any of my older brushes out here anymore I used to keep a bunch of older brushes uh, <clears throat> Here's one. So something like this that's all already kind of frayed and not looking too hot, you can use it. Um, I should put a little bit of water on there. And pounce, so push, push down, so it spreads those bristles out a little bit, and then you can use it to do that kind of same type of thing. It may have a little bit of a di different texture, but it will, it'll work. Yeah, that works. So I never throw out any of my brushes. I always have, you know, either give them away or, you know, recycle and use them for stuff like this where you can always kind of find something some way to reuse it, but that those work pretty well. And then you can also use, like I said, the hog bristle brushes, a stiff bristle brush of some sort. If you can get one that's kind of a rounded or flat shape like this, you can even cut it. So if you had um, one of those cheaper uh, brushes like like this, this is a hog bristle. You can just cut. You know, you could cut it to a shape. These aren't that expensive, though. Honestly, I think they're like 3 or $4. They're not that bad, and I use mine a lot. So it's on my essentials um, list. I have an, a list on the brush guys that is like my most used brushes, and it's these are on there because I do. I use them for a lot of stuff. They're great for fur. I use them for um, foliage and landscapes and clouds and stuff like that, too. They have a lot of... A lot of uses. All right. Going a little bit lighter now. So we're just kind of slowly building up these layers here. Pretty good. You can see where I've done it and where I haven't done it. It looks like it's got a hat on there. <laughs> Let's just put some of this up here. This is a lighter color. Okay. 
almost pure white. A little bit of gray in it. This area right above the nose has got a lot of light. As it comes out off the eyes, it kind of comes out this way. So they angle out off the nose. looking very light like I feel like there's a lot of dark areas in here that we still need to kind of come back to get some black hair who's calling you works calling you mm -mm. You're busy. You're already working. <laughs> hmm? <I> did. You did? <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and use this color on the nose here. Give it a second layer. Adding a little bit of that black back in. And I'll be adding the lighter color on top of it. So we want to make sure we clarify that uh, uh, Princeton has changed the name of the brush to just Blender. Oh, yeah. So on your list it just says Blender on there. Okay. Yeah. Using kind of a medium gray here to kind of put in some of this areas over the dark spots. If you need to go, you can. Nope. So is it the Velvet Touch Blender? Yeah. Ooh, the quarter inch and the three eighths inch are out of stock. Uh oh. Right.
right now. The eighth inch is in stock. Okay. Yeah, they're about five, five to six dollars, right in that range. Oh, are they? Yep. I thought they were cheaper. Even with the discount? Yep. Mm. Hmm. Well, I mean, that's before the 5% off, right? Yeah, The but price still. is on that list, yeah. I thought they were cheaper than that. Sorry. That's prices in 2020. Yeah, I haven't checked it in a while. So if you're watching in like 2029, the prices may be different. <laughs> True that. Alrighty, so pretty happy with that. I'm gonna um, still need to go over with some lighter areas. Let's continue working on him. Let's get the this area back here done. This is not really sure what that is. Part of the back or something. A little bit of darker color. We did it in a brown, but it wasn't quite dark enough. It's close. We're going to be adding white all along this edge here, so I'm just going to wait and I'll do this when I do that. So let's go ahead and use this over here. It's really, really quiet. What are you writing over there? Notes. Mm -hmm. I'm writing words. I saw that. I'm really nosy, aren't I? Yeah, and you're like over here. I should say none of your beeswax. <laughs> no, it was recommended by people in chat that we update the description down below to remove the name Willow from the uh, blender okay. to help reduce confusion. Good idea. So I'm giving you homework. Okay. Alright, doing the white hair. I'm sure now this is where I want to go over the top of that green. I have a nice fuzzy edge. Yo, he's so cute. Can't stand it. This is where he starts to get cute. Like he starts to come together a little bit. stage where it's starting to starting to look like I want it to look, you know. Okay. You look like you want to pet him, don't you? <laughs> I know. I'm weird. Sorry. Okay. Um, I did mention, also I was going to mention, uh, last week we talked about 
um, that we would not be painting on next Saturday, but we, we will be here next Saturday. So we were not, we are not going to be out of town like I thought we might. Your normal schedule, no problems. Because I'm a scaredy cat and don't want to fly by myself. <laughs> 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 Let's be real. <laughs> That's okay. Oops, I'm off camera yeah, completely. I, I see that. That's part of the bonus video later. Is it? Yeah. Okay. They can see you paint a little bit of that hand there. <laughs> I can uh, light gray. A little bit on the hand. Some white hair. Right there. A pretty strong highlight right on the top of the hand, right there. Way up. Looking good so far there, huh? Thank you. Just go with kind of a lightish gray here to so get this. These ones are kind of long down here. brush strokes for these without them looking funky. It's kind of a hard I'm getting this repetitive white dab there that I'm not liking so I'm going to go back in and Real small, real fast, right up in here. And it's okay to keep um, certain areas kind of blurry. So, like up in here, the hand's sort of in focus, but it's not our focal point. So, we can kind of um, fudge it a little bit by just kind of keeping it a little bit more blended and not. Um, not as crisp. So I'm going to paint it in, but I'm not going to do as many layers as I do down here, maybe. In that and you can do that as a painter you can kind of decide where you want it's almost like taking a photograph and blurring the background you know you can do that on you know like my phone will allow you to blur your background or do different things it's kind of what we're doing 
with this. We're gonna we're deciding where we want our emphasis to be, and so we can really easily kind of pull the attention to the place where we want to by making this more detailed and blurring this out just a little bit. I'm not gonna do a lot, but we're gonna, you know, just I'm not as interested in spending a ton ton of time on this area. It's not our focal point, so don't need to. Spend a ton of time on it. I'm turning this because it's a little bit easier to get the brush strokes in the direction that I want. I got kind of a white blob right there, just had too much paint lay down at one time, so I'm gonna just kinda of go back over that a little bit with a gray to smooth it out. Some of this is kind of curving down too, so I'm going to take some of the, I'm going to use the edge of my brush this way and just draw some of these coming down a little bit thicker. And that helps too with fur, because it doesn't always lay exactly right, you know, it may have gotten a little roughed up or they moved and it, you know, the the hairs kind of cross each other that that'll help make it look a little bit more realistic too if we kind of do it in one direction then kind of just shift the direction just a little bit and kind of do some that are crisscrossing one another so that fur gets a little bit napped up and kind of combined some of that kind of medium gray here just working on that transition between this shadow and down in here and then what I'm gonna do is right along here I'm gonna add it, it glaze it so that I don't have to worry about trying to get that dark fur right up against that edge there I'm just gonna glaze it Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. Right that up snuck into the up on me. What? Man, that snuck up on me. <laughs> All righty. So let's work on our tree a little bit more. I need to get the tree done before I do the last little bit on the ear because it's overlapping it so much. I don't want to have to go back in and try to mess with it. So I'm going to create my brown with the blue here. That kind of grayed out color. And then there's a lot of highlights on this bark too. So I'm going to get some white and use it. So we've already got our color down. I'm gonna use a little bit of that, make kind of a medium color. I'm gonna go along that edge just a little bit. And this kind of clean that up a little bit. It's a little bit messy right now.
fire over the top of it, that kind of thing. So just kind of clean that up if you need to. And again, we don't have to worry too much about it right here. We're going to be shadowing that arm so it's not going to look quite right right now. I'm going to go right up against that and start adding some little highlights in my bark. Man, just up until you did that, it looked like he was holding onto a really big chocolate bar. <laughs> it's like, this is mine. <laughs> to him, it probably is like a chocolate bar. He's like, this mm. is my food. Maybe why you get that. You read the intent. <laughs> Yeah, with the, gla with the eyes that are glowing, it's like, don't mm, touch it. Exactly. This is mine. This is my tree. My tree. I'm going to go a little bit more blue on some of these highlights. be glazing this also so don't worry about going too light with this I'd rather have it too light than not dark enough and then not light enough because we're gonna glaze over everything I'm really trying to leave a lot of texture here you can see how I'm leaving the the canvas texture showing in some places Still just using that blender, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done most of the painting so far with this. Mm -hmm. I want to use a little bit darker color in some of these areas here. These areas where I've got that lighter color, I'm going to go around them and try to leave those like they're peeking through. with it until it gets it right. Maybe tap. I may just go be going a little bit too light with it. Think my seeds have come up? <laughs> I don't think so. No. Mm -mm. When you planted this morning? Yeah. Probably not. It's Unless been, they're bean seeds. It's been like three or four hours. Oh, maybe there's a giant lettuce to the to the clouds. <laughs> Again, this year it's a little scary proposition. We've done it 
couple times before and with mixed results. So <laughs> 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 trying to research a little bit more this time and going a little bit more prepared. <laughs> We're not very good at green thumbs. <laughs> They'll look really, really good when we first plant them. <laughs> and then after that, we'll see. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mark calls her. Is a plant hospice. Or else they have plant hospice, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think if we put in an irrigation system, we'll be okay. So that they're getting to water or not watering the right amount at the right times is my problem. Because mm -hmm. I forget to water and then I'm like, they start to droop and then I like overwater them and then everything gets waterlogged. It's like. All right, so now going back over with this dark, you see how we're kind of just layering, 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 leaving a little bit of each under layer showing each time we add in a new color. This is definitely getting there now, closer to what I wanted it to look like. And then what I need to do is go in with this dark and I need to find these areas where, let's use a smaller brush. Areas where we left some of that background showing and I add a dark shadow right around it. Mostly along the top edge. And we've kind of got, <laughs> for some reason, I've covered, I'm covered up most of the reddish orange so I'm gonna have to come back in and add some so I'm just gonna put some of this shadow where I want some of that color to be later and we'll have it dark areas too. Or some of the highlighted areas I mean. burnt orange and yellow oxide here. I wasn't sure if I needed the yellow. I may not use it at all. So believe it or not, we're talking about chocolate in chat. Uh -huh. And we have told this story before, but on it was Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's true. Right in France. Mm -hmm. We got some 100% pure dark chocolate. We were like And so we're excited. like, oh my gosh, this is going to so be incredible. We got some champagne. <laughs> yeah, we, we had strawberry. Yeah, we, we went, you know, at our hotel and, and oh my gosh. <laughs> we both, I think we ate it at the same time yeah. and we just looked at each other and like spit, spit it, it out. out. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so yucky. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you need 
need some sugar. <laughs> so like 80, 85 is about the most you want to go. Yeah. <laughs> Like, oh my gosh, it's so funny. <laughs> like, what were we thinking? Like, we've never seen this in the U.S. before. <laughs> this is so awesome. French is the best. <laughs> Delicious French chocolate. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. That's the night you ended up being on the phone with a credit card company for an hour or two. Yep. <laughs> yeah, because they, the rental car we turned in put a lock or like lots of thousands of dollars until it, you know, cleared the check-in of our car. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so <laughs> we shared a meal. Mm-hmm. Cassoulet, if I if I remember correctly. I don't think so. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm starting to glaze here. Got the burnt sienna and burnt umber here. Yeah. Adventures and. We were not the best travel <laughs> travelers. <laughs> well, Mark's been back several times since, though. That was our first time. So I work for a French company. Just to clarify, yeah, it's business expense. <laughs> we can't afford to go to France all the time. No. Yeah, that was a big, big deal for me to go. All right, adding the dark along that side there. Let's see how we're glazing in. I'm not loving the the tree yet. We'll get there. Using watered down or just glazed down uh, black and burnt umber for this. But uh, somebody's asked uh, when you glaze, does the paint underneath have to be dry? Yes, yes, for sure. Yes, that's a big deal. If it's not, it'll just lift it off. Okay. I'm going to get the angle brush here. Get some of this gray from before. And I'm just going to lay it on and let it drag. trying to go around my little spots there but just dragging a little bit of the kind of medium highlight color that had that blue and brown together on it
going to use some of this black with the glazing medium. Maybe add a little bit of the white to it to tone it down a little bit. And let's glaze the underarm of this because it's needing some definition right there. So put the glaze down and then I'm just using, I wiped it off and I'm just using the dry brush to pull that color out a little bit. And I can grab the straight glaze and use it along that edge. Be careful doing that though because it can like lift off what's already there and it dries fairly quickly so you don't have a whole lot of time to work with it so you may have to do it in sections but um, there we go so now we've got that shadow right there on the arm let's use a little bit of it um, on this side shadow that area on this side of the branch Little bit on the chin. Use a little bit of the darker color, a little more color. The darker you need it, you know, just use more of the straight black. So around the mouth here, I wanted a little bit more black. So use a little bit more of the color, wipe it off. Go back in with some of the lighter color and just kind of blend out around it. To smooth it out. See how that works. So you have to do the texture first because this doesn't add texture. This just and it, in fact it kind of smooths everything out a little bit. So if you may end up having to, and I probably will go back in and add another layer of the highlights on top of this um, because it it can tend to smooth everything out a little bit too much but it also it that smoothing um, effect that it does um, tends to blend everything together a little bit nicer and especially when you've got a lot of layers like this it can really help kind of unify everything and make it look a little bit more polished, a little bit more realistic. And you want to use glazing medium and not just water because with heavy body acrylics the water will underbind it so it, it uh, breaks down the binder in the paint it's kind of like the kryptonite yeah exactly yeah so it won't stick very well to the canvas and if you do layers on top it would lift off and I do want it a little bit lighter right there than I'm going to go back in with a little bit of white here. Oh, I forgot to mention the angle brush too is an option to do fur too. It does work a pretty good job. Also, so. Okay. If uh, somebody's on a budget, mm -hmm. what acrylic paint would you suggest? Um, I used the Liquitex basics with my students for a long time. 
it works really well for it's a little bit more fluid than this one so it's a little bit easier to control somewhat um, some techniques are a little bit harder like dry brushing is not quite as easy you have to use less paint um, but for the most part it, it does a good job uh, the colors are better than craft acrylics which would be your cheapest option but they have like sets of them that are pretty good. I'm going to be using a set from Arteza. I haven't used them yet, so I don't know if I can recommend them yet. But um, so that'll be coming up next Saturday. So you can see how those work if you want to. I'm assuming they'll be all right. They look pretty good to me. So I just thought I'd try they're sponsoring a video, so um, I'm going to use the smaller blender here, and I've mixed that gray blue here, blue, blue and hair. brown. Fashion mix by Cool Train on Amazon Music. What? No, 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 no. Alexa, stop. What the heck? Uh, all right, I need to turn her sound off. Gee whiz, that was weird. I hope I don't get a, like a, I hope not, I hope YouTube doesn't try to monetize our oh, video. Oh, that's it, it's over. That would be bad. So now everybody else with Alexa is all going off. Yeah. <laughs> Stop. She controls our lights in here. Yeah. She, most of the time she behaves herself, but every now and then she decides to jump in there and do something we didn't ask her to do. Like that. She's Pretty always funny. listening. I, it's kind of creepy. And, like, like, I saw that they had these ones where, like, like um, it tells you what to wear or something. <laughs> like, it's a camera thing. I'm like, heck to the no. Like, no way. <laughs> I'm not, like, undressing in front of the Alexa that's on a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Are you crazy? Unreal. Okay. Sorry if you have one. <laughs> to each his own. Yeah. But I'm a little more shy than that. I don't... <laughs> Mm. Yeah, that happens sometimes. <laughs> with that unusual. I don't know why she does that? I've been spending way too much time on this stinking turkey. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. Eventually. And honestly, it doesn't have to, I don't know why I'm doing this. It doesn't have to look exactly like the photograph. <laughs> have, you, have you met Angela before? I don't know. It's like you're surprised. So you're asking if I ever get frustrated with my paintings. Just saying. Case in point. Well, I was trying to do it the easy way, and then it just didn't look right, and then I kept adding more, and just now it's like not quite what I had in mind, but it's all right. All right. There's, there's just some high contrast in here. There's some areas where there's um, dark and light right up against each other, and that's always kind of tricky to get it to look right because it can tend to look like the light or the dark is kind of pasted on, and you don't want that. 
the glazing helped, though it kind of smoothed everything out a little bit, so. Stop at whatever point that you find you like your tree. So you may have liked it after the second layer. And that's totally fine. All right, I'm gonna, I just need to put like a highlight up the middle here and that'll make it look more rounded. And then we'll be good, hopefully. English forest, Let's see if this works. edges. Smooth it out a little bit. There we go. And there's some highlight over here too. lost all that really good orangey stuff that was in there though. I'm just kind of not happy about that part of it. I'm going to try to dip some of that in there. I'm uh, kicking back in comfortable. <laughs> Poor honey. You've been, it's been a quiet, quiet video today. All right, let's work on the face now. Got that tree gun. I'm going to work on his nostrils here. Get a little bit of that quinacridone magenta and unbleached titanium, maybe a little bit of the cadmium red.
get a little bit of the burnt sienna with the magenta there. Let's use a little bit of black too. We did dark pink. I'm gonna add a little bit of that nose color to it. There we go. I'm gonna use this around the eye. It's a little bit lighter than that. There we go. Let me know if you zoom in. I'll try to stay on camera. Okay, we'll just do the face. Yeah, there you go. Is it? It's not zoomed in, is it? It's not a focus. I'm not sure. You want me to check it? Let me check it. No, it's, it's on manual. Okay. Alright, I think it's on auto now. Getting some of the black, brown, and I'm gonna get some ultramarine blue here. Oh, there's the glass. Good for the glazy medium. I'm gonna use some. So, just creating kind of a bluish gray here. Oh man, three hours and counting. Gee whiz, this guy's taking a long time. <laughs> Is anybody still watching? No. <laughs> We're by ourselves, so I can quit now. <laughs> That's what you're saying? No. <laughs> Man, would that not make people? Can you imagine watching a video and like getting to this point and being like, I think that's good enough. <laughs> I'm hungry. I want to go get some lunch. <laughs> oh, no, no. I wouldn't do that to you guys. <laughs> okay. Getting some of that blue gray there, the mix. Put it right in there. Right in there. Get that darker color. Around it. I'm gonna highlight that lid a little bit. This brush is a little bit too big, so these lines are a little bit big.
get a little bit of that gray, some of that unbleached titanium here. And Some black, mix that with the gray, just trying to kind of soften that up a little bit, tapping around it. There we go. Okay. Just loading the tip of it. And I'm gonna go in the eyes and shadow around the outside of that pupil. Make sure that you're getting a little bit of a darkness around that top area, especially. bit of yellow close just using the very tip of the brush just gonna dab it in there yellow oxide I need to round that out right there. I can see it's just a little too scrunched up. So I'm just going to round out the bottom of that. I'm going to use the black in the center just to darken up that pupil a little bit. right there. Rounding that out. Alright, let's use this smaller brush. I'm just looking at my reference photo here. I'm gonna get a little bit of white at the very tip of my brush and highlight around the side right here and a little again neighbor thank you. That right here. Put a little bit in the inside part of the eye there and right here. And then let's get that zinc white. And I'm going to use the ultramarine blue with it. Do my first highlights with this. So it's a little bit of blue. Okay. And then I'm going to get more of the just 
just the zinc white. And go back in and dab some highlights in here. There we go. It goes from weird to looking all right. It's amazing how that worked, doesn't it? That's a fun of painting. Okay, let's get the small Willow's Blender here. I'm gonna get more of that blue and zinc white here. just a tiny bit of black to so gray it out just a little bit put a little color down and then just push it around put it down where you want it the brightest push it around make sure that you don't go back over that area too much like right here I can see where it's kind of lifting because I touched it while it was starting to dry so when you do this kind of dry brushing you just have to kind of work quickly and know when to stop so I need to stop here let that dry I'll put more layers on let me get a little bit of the blue I can do it on this side more of the dark blue Just ultramarine, maybe a little bit of black in there with it. It's got a little bit of the white still in my brush, so it's tinting it a little bit. Just kind of dry brushing that highlight on right there. Okay, and then we'll definitely need to do it a couple more times on there to darken it up. I this bottom area needs let's get a brush here and clean that up a little bit of the blue and black here Making sure that this top edge right here has a nice dark rim and then we're going to start the highlight just inside. That's dry enough, I think. Oh. It's ruined. It's ruined now. Yeah. Maybe stop. Okay, get some more of that. Zinc white. And if you don't have zinc white, use try titanium white and just use glazing medium like we showed at the beginning. So come just underneath that that black, leave a little bit of a black rim there. And just pull down. A little bit thicker with the paint this time. Still trying to keep, I mean you can see that very little paint is on there. It's not globbed on my brush. Oh, I can have control. You don't need a whole lot of paint for this technique. Okay, so that paint right there is starting to dry right there. So I need to let that dry right there. And I can do more, but I'm just got to be patient with it. I can work down here a little bit. I wiped everything off my brush. So I got very little on my brush. Just going to dust the tiniest little bit right down the middle there. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and let's, while that's drying, let's go ahead and grab my white. And I'm going to work on the brightest highlight areas now. So 
right above the eyebrows. There's this really bright white. Got a little bit on the eye there. Don't want it that down that far. There we go. Okay, let's try that one again. My paint's starting to get dry, so it's doing weird things. light around the eye just in general thought he'd be a little bit easier but he's got he's he's a little tricky a little tricky bugger this one uh... I'm probably putting more detail in than I need to as always but It's really light right here. On either side of that nose, it's really... I kind of wish sometimes that I can do like a screen capture, split screen to mm -hmm. show people the the before and after, you know, the because we kind of forget right now uh -huh. that an hour, hour and a half ago, it, it was this. Like a hot mess. It was this creepy hot mess, <laughs> you know, and and it's because, like you were saying, it's it's the layers. It's right. it's you paint the the deepest part and set that background, and then you just slowly build the right. the layers on it to give it that depth and the and the textures mm -hmm. and and you know a lot of people and I'm one of them that thinks that oh it's just a single brush stroke and boom you know it, it's it's it, right. it's representation. So, and like you said, that's why a lot of people may get up, you know, give up and get frustrated because they make that first layer and go, right. what the heck? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly why I make sure that I, you know, point that out when I'm, when I'm doing it. Because actually, it's funny, sometimes people will send me pictures of their paintings and be like, what am I doing wrong? And I'm just like, nothing. It looks, it's coming along good. You just got to keep, keep going, you know? Um, because they're, they're not seeing the, and I, you know, and I'll point out, I'd be like, what does mine look like at this point, <laughs> you know, in the video? And when they kind of stop and look and they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Hers doesn't look any better than mine does. You know, at that point you gotta, you kind of realize, okay, you just gotta, you got to let the, kind of trust the process, I call right. it, you know, trust the process, it'll get there, just gotta, you can't skip steps. Right, and, and take your time. Right. You know. You don't have to finish it in one setting like I'm doing. Correct. Or in two hours or three hours, whatever. Right. You know, we. We do this because one Angela's done this for so long, and 
you know, she knows where she's going. You know, that that's another thing that people get frustrated with is that when you're actually painting it, you know where you're going. But when you're following along, you know. Right. You don't know where I'm heading. Exactly. Either. So you got to think about it a little bit more and it takes a little bit longer anyways. So mm-hmm. yeah. it's okay to enjoy painting and take your time. Well, and it's normal to have frustrations, too. That's also, you know, part of the process. And, and, uh, uh, don't give up, you know. That's the main thing. Don't, don't give up in the ugly stage. Keep on trying until it gets to where you want it to be. And you may have to step away from it. I find that a lot of times it's helpful, especially if you're getting really frustrated with something. Just step away. Go get a cup of coffee. Go, you know, watch a movie, read a book, do something, take a walk, come back to it in an hour, two hours, a day. Don't, you know, don't give it up forever. Don't spend too much time away because then you'll tend to not want to go back to it. You, but you know, there's like a fine line there, you know. But uh, it can help to kind of get away from it for a minute and just kind of take a step back. That's what I was saying about the bonus videos, you know. It's like I rarely, when I'm painting by myself at home, will I finish a painting in one setting from start to finish, like I do on YouTube. It's just not a normal part process. Normally, I will stop and walk away. And go, you know, take a break, stretch, do something, and come back to it. And you always can kind of see things better with fresh eyes, too. You know, it's easier to kind of see where you need to go next. Um, And so that's one of the things I've kind of had to give up doing these live shows, which I like doing the live stream, um, for sure. I, I think for me, it's just a, it's an, I like teaching live I'm used to teaching live so it just makes more sense I feel weird when I'm trying to teach to a camera instead of a feel like I'm teaching to a person here you know so that's because you are well I know but I'm just saying you know like this versus camera for camera it just feels like I'm talking to myself for some reason even though I know other people are watching it's just like they're not watching right then so right it you know I just feel like I'm talking to myself It's too easy to overthink it, too. Yeah. Because you know, like, oh, well, I can edit this out later, or I can do this. Right. Yep. Yep. I'm going to get a little bit of black here. Just add back in some black. This didn't go dark enough back in here. look at there for there's a lot of there's like I think there's it's white on the base maybe and then or white on the tip and then black at the base I'm not sure they may have black skin too I'm not sure but I know they've got got to have some black on the these hairs too so they're going from white to black I believe Looks like at least in the photos. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Okay, let's get this done here. I'm not going to do anything more with the background. I, I if I had more time, I would, but I'm not. I'm not going to do it today. I'm just we're getting close to over three hours here, so just need to get it done. Yeah. But I think it'd be cool to kind of do a little bit more with the leaves and things back there. So when you do yours, you'll have time to get creative with that. I think it'd be cool to see what you guys come up with. Okay, our our friends from Down Under say that the underlay of fur is dark with long, white Guard hairs. 
Interesting. Never heard of a guard hair. That's, that is interesting. Hopefully we're doing him justice for you guys. He's so sweet. never seen one in person outside of a zoo. Be cool. So, I'm going to work on that little cheek area there because he's got that little kind of a smile. Not quite right, right there. Kind of does like that. Just blend it in. Adding that white and then adding kind of that mid tone gray to kind of blend it in. Christopher. Where it's needed, we can add some glaze. Get some black and some of these areas just got kind of thinned out black hair the glazing medium so it's not full dark Shadow that opening of the nostril. And then add some of that lighter color right in here at the bottom. Opens that up, makes it look like a pocket in there. Put in that I like color toward the bottom here and that shadow up. Somebody asked what kind of glaze. This is the gloss, uh, golden gl gloss glazing liquid. They are not a sponsor, but I wish they were. Come on, golden. Come <laughs> on, you can do it. All right. using this shadow color here top 
up the nostril there. There we go. All right, let's do one more layer on the nose highlight there. And then we need to do the ears and we'll be done. I'm still not 100% happy with that mouth, but let's do something. Yeah, something like that. Ultramarine blue and zinc white. Wiped it off and then just rubbing around those edges a little little bit. I don't want to touch the middle part there to lift it off. I'm going to have to do it one more time because it got a little bit lift right there. Wipe that brush off. with the black, glaze it back over just a little bit, push it back. I did it while it was wet, it lifted it off a little bit, so. But, okay, so I'm pretty happy with that, I think. Let's go ahead and do the ears and we'll be done. Using white hair. And I may want to add a little bit of water because it's just not one to flow. I'm going to add just a little bit of black down here so I have kind of a gray, medium color. I've already got a little bit of the gray in here, but need to have a little bit of both. So we'll do that kind of gray color first. Somebody asked, can they use mixing white like zinc white? Yeah, it'll, it's a, got a little bit of titanium white in it, but it should work for you. You may have to add a little bit of glazing medium to it, but... Oops. Did not mean to do that. I all looked away. Okay. Little bitty, and then they start to get long. I 
So where this attaches here, I can do a couple different things. I can do smaller brush strokes kind of up over it to kind of help hide it, right? Because you don't want like it obvious where it starts. And um, I can also glaze a little bit over it. And the glazing, what that will do. So if I decide right there, I want it to go down into the ear, I can glaze a little bit of that black color, if I can get some. I can glaze it right there. And that will push that down into the ear. Use that glaze in some of the places, but see how that kind of just pop that hair right down into that ear now. It's part of it. Use black. Cashmere's decided it's time to quit. She's going to start getting up in Mark's business now. She, she does this whenever she's decided that she's it's time to end the video. She's pretty funny. Our cat, Cashmere. You can hear her chirping at Mark. Cashmere, what are you doing? Okay. So this is where that that uh, rake brush could come in, or the grainier. These work really good for the long, thin lines. So you could use it for just for this part here. Just have to kind of layer just like I did with the other brush, kind of overlap them a little bit so that they. of the two brushes and kind of get a more natural looking look to it. Get that medium gray color going here.
just using the black like I would to glaze and just kind of going over some of these and blending them in a little bit. Let's do it over here too. Lots of little dabs and yeah. thing just to give it all the layers of the fur. So it takes out to get it looking realistic, or at least close to. enjoyed it today. We, he's been fun to paint. Hope you learned something maybe. If not, hope you just enjoyed getting to see the process. <laughs> I learned the white chili billies are popcorn flavor. <laughs> okay, good to know. point we could go back in and glaze again if we needed to but oh I was going to do a little bit more of the white along this fur along here it's kind of a white halo along the outside of the body right here got some of that backlighting going on yeah sure that it's blended in a little bit. Don't want it to look like it's, you know, just a line on the edge of the painting. So I'm going to get that glaze and kind of go over it a little bit with the dark, dark gray glaze. Did I do it? All right. Did I get everything? I don't know if I... I'm sure I've probably missed something. But... Oi! I want to call it good. Um, do a little... Uh, super chat? 
sweet. Yes, we have super chat. Sorry, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we had a bunch of people with us today. Good. Thank you for joining us and for this incredible koala painting. And a shout out to Krista. And she said, he's looking so gorgeous, I had to send something. Oh. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. And then we had... Uh, let's see. Well, we had a second one from Krista <laughs> and said, Mark, order pizza. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hashtag feed the Mark. <laughs> and then we had a third one from Krista. <laughs> and she says, okay. And this is for some more paint. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Krista. It's awesome. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I love it. So thank you, Krista, and yourself and yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, let me just tap in some black in here. I noticed and this this could be um, a whole nother hour of just doing these little tiny, you know, adjustments, and that's okay if that's what it takes, you know, to get it to where you want it to be. So, and that's pretty normal for me. I, I, um. Like I said, I no, hardly ever will finish a painting like in one setting. So um, I would probably take this and set it up in my living room or something and and then go back in and adjust a few things here and there. I don't have the time to do that today, obviously, but you guys probably don't want to sit around and watch TV with us while I'm looking at this painting. So, um, But just kind of know that that's part of the process, too, that probably, you know, there's probably a few little things that I could tweak with it. Um, there might have missed a few little sh shadowing areas or different things but um, you can always add those in on yours if you see that it needs it um, so another, another super chat and there go. Mm -hmm. this one just in from Jillian oh thank you Jillian and she said thanks for the Aussie koala Aww. love you both <laughs> love you Jillian oh, thank thanks, you thanks Jillian that's awesome. Yes. Yeah. Shout out to all of our Aussies out there. We appreciate you guys. Jillian's been a fan from way back. She watched like one of my very first live streams, I think. So. And you know that they're good people if they've stayed with us through all those old videos. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> no joke. Good and bad. We've had lots of different... <laughs> Lots of different. Oh, uh, we got a message to check our PayPal. Oh. Okay, let me look. It'd be on my phone. Yeah, the PayPal is nice because they only take like 9% versus 30% off YouTube takes mm -hmm. from Super Chat, sadly. Um, let me see. But we still, it's still wonderful. It's all so incredible. Don't, yeah, don't. Don't not. Not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Laura Keller says, thank you, Angela and Mark. Another fun tutorial. Oh, thank you, Laura. Very nice. She sent that off of PayPal there. So. Okay. Checked hmm. my email. So I wonder if it's the same person. Laura? Keller? Yeah, because the person who said check your PayPal is... Debbie in chat. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's undercover. Let me, I may have missed one. I'll ring the bell anyways. Okay. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Loud. I don't know. That's the only one I see. But okay. All right. Well, hopefully Debbie is Laura. And if not, thank you, Debbie. I'll yes. find it later, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so I just add another layer of white there to the arm. But, oh, he's so cute. Yeah, I like it. Just make sure that your darks are dark and your lights are light. 
that's one thing that will really help give him really good dimension. So brighten up if you're if it's looking a little bit flat, or you can check it um, in black and white um, and see you know how yours compares to the original. And you may need to just go you know like super black in your shadow areas and and then you know extra bright white in some of these areas. There's only a few areas where it's really bright white, um, but. Anyhow, all right, I'm going to get off of here. Thanks, guys. Whoa, three and a half hours. There we go. Yeah, we did it. He's adorable. Worth every minute. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, if you want the traceable for him, it's going to be available on Patreon.com probably tomorrow. I'm not going to do it tonight. I'm tired. <laughs> we'll probably do it tomorrow, but it'll be up sometime tomorrow uh, if you want to paint along and he traces yours out on, the, on your canvas and get a head start on it if you don't have to draw it. Um, and for the five dollar level, you also get the reference photos. So one dollar levels, or actually it's two dollars now on traceables, um, is uh, uh, tra just traceables. Correct. And then the five dollar level gets you bonus videos and the reference photos and mm -hmm. the traceables. So you get a little bit more. And, $10. and then ten dollars mean gets all of that plus the extra Facebook group that and the weekly videos just for them that we work on something together all month long so yeah. all right that's it we'll be uh, back Tuesday yep we'll be back Tuesday and uh, we'll be painting what are we painting Tuesday I don't know I don't, I don't have my thing up we'll find out real quick um, do a quick fill oh butterfly we're painting a butterfly on Tuesday and then next weekend we're gonna do a um, a uh, landscape Oh, yeah. Kind of a yeah. sunset landscape. Yes, kind of goes along with the sun, the landscape series that we did last year. Um, so if you were part of that and did any of those, you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it's kind of one of those. So I think it'll be fun. And we're going to have the sponsor for that one. So if you're interested in seeing how the Artiza paints work, that'll be next, next Saturday. All right. So, Good job, it. honey. Thanks. I don't great. know what to say anymore. I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining. Like, yes. subscribe. All that good stuff. That stuff. Share Check it with me on social media. Yeah. Huh? Check out all those other videos. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. After the after this, you can go to click on my name or my photo, and it'll take you to my homepage where, uh, on YouTube here, and you can see all the other videos that we've got available. We've got all kinds of different ones for you. So, all right. I'm going to widen out his cheeks just a little bit right here. And That's while it. she does that, just remind everybody that I also down below the videos list of all the materials, brushes, yes. links to Amazon store, brush guy store, and all that good stuff too. Yes. It's a nice, easy way to support the channel. All right. Thanks guys. We are out of here. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>